Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Playful Humans podcast. I'm your host, Mike Montague, and my guest this week is Raquel Boris. She is a personal branding coach and self-proclaimed queen of goofiness. So we'll see how goofy she gets here in just a minute. You can find our YouTube channel, Rock the Boat. Uh, that's R-A-U, the boat. Uh, and we're going to talk to her about what it's like to play for a living. The show is brought to you by Playful Humans. If you need a little more fun, flow, and fulfillment in your life, rediscover the power of play as an adult, playfulhumans.com. Uh, and there's a free online quiz. Find out how playful you are. Let's do it. Here we go. Don't wait for tomorrow. Dance break. Nice moves. You got some skill. I like the goofiness. I picked the right guest today. Uh, the joke of the week. Let's start with there. The joke of the week is brought to you by the Electoral College, undefeated in football since 1776. Uh, here is the joke of the week. It's a knock knock joke. Do you know why there aren't any knock knock jokes about America, Raquel? We have no doors. <laughs> because freedom rings. Freedom rings. It doesn't knock. All right, there we go. Uh, that gets us started in the right mood. This is clearly not serious, uh, any of the sponsors or, or anything, but uh, both of us are trying to have as much fun as we can while making a living and doing this adulting thing. I have flies in my mouth, thing. sorry. I just went around before this. <laughs> I don't even know what's happening. Uh, but I met you because I saw how much fun uh, you were having on LinkedIn and doing personal branding. And I thought it would be, uh, it's one of my missions and I think messages to people is that it's actually more powerful to have fun and be goofy and be different than it is to be professional, boring, work hard, grind, and try to um, impress people with how professional you are, right? That you actually attract more people by being weird, not by being normal. Do you find that to be true? Uh, I do, as I'm wearing a sweatshirt with um, all the old school 80s uh, <laughs> cartoon characters. Uh, the cereal, cereal yeah, boxes. cereals. Those yes, are the cereal lucky, mascots. Lucky Charms, that was my guy. Yes, I'm all about having fun. And it's not because I purposely decided that I was going to be different and that I was going to kind of brand myself in that way. It just happened in the sense that I just became more comfortable with who I was. And I am a goofball. I am a little kid at heart. I've always liked to have fun. I've always liked to be a smart ass and make people laugh and smile. And so as I just kind of put myself out there in a way, in that way, I was attracting those kind of people. And those are the kind of people that I want to surround myself <laughs> with too. I don't want the, you know, the stuffy, serious people that really take life too seriously or themselves too seriously. So I realized that I was attracting what I was putting out there. And that's what I want. If you if you don't want that, then, then that's okay. But I want that in my life. Yeah, me too. And I, I'm curious, did you feel like you ever lost it? I think sometimes... I tried to work hard and, and be professional and, and focused and, you know, successful. And sometimes I felt like I had to hide the goofiness, but I was always naturally goofy. I would do shows for my parents in the living room and interview my brother when we were doing, you know, swimming races across the pool or, or something and always just tried to like put on a show and have fun. But I do feel like in certain circles, especially business, I, I lost it. And then I had to get it back and be like, oh, okay. Or were you just always really kind of that confident and able to, to be goofy the whole time? I was always like that in my workplace. I'm very lucky mm -hmm. in the sense that I've always kind of, it's hard for me not to be who I am. I think that's the difficult part in the sense that I get people that are like, wow, you have no filter. Like you literally just <laughs> say what's in your mind. And, and that's something that I thought, oh man, like no one's going to want to ever hang out with me or talk to me or hire me. <laughs> Just like area <laughs> of the mouth. But if anything, it was a good thing because I was just who I was from the start. So in my workplace, yeah. people always knew I was kind of the quirky one. It was putting myself out there on social media though, 
when I first started with, for instance, LinkedIn, I definitely wasn't doing that because I thought, okay, this is a business platform and I have to look professional. I have to play the part. And so, yes, for a while there, I was definitely not being my true self. I was holding myself back. And, you know, being in the, I was in the working for a builder and then the mortgage industry, and those aren't the most um, a fun, glamorous <laughs> industries, if you will. So when I started kind of putting myself out there more as who I was, it was hard not to stand out. And then I realized, okay, standing out is actually a good thing on social media. I mean, that was even before it was so saturated. Right now, the now social media is so right. saturated and there are so many different platforms that you have to stand out, period. Like in any shape, way or form, it doesn't have to be necessarily fun or goofy, but maybe you're the really serious one, the, the fuddy dud. Hey, maybe you'll stand out because you're the biggest fuddy dud out there. <laughs> I think that would be awesome if somebody did that. That would be a, a great like, thing super dry, to brand yourself as. Yeah, and just robot. <laughs> and be like the most boring Jeez. social media posts. Uh, it might work for their brand. <laughs> people would. There's a Blend It channel where people blend things in a, a blender for a little. I mean. Yeah. I think you could take a corner of the market there with something really boring, but yeah, I, I prefer more fun. And for me, it was kind of the same thing that uh, I had the nickname Romeo because my last name is Montague. And I so was, I was going to say, I was going to yeah. you know, reference Romeo and Juliet, but I figured everybody and their mother did. <laughs> yeah. And when I was on the radio and I was Romeo, the DJ guy, it was really easy for me to be myself and playful. But then I also designed websites and, and helped with social media and, and stuff. And I thought, well, the website guy, Mike, the, the internet marketing consultant, isn't as goofy and, and you know. Um, and so I feel like there was a little bit of like two sides of the personality going on. And when I got them both together, I found a lot more success, but it's also just a lot easier to be authentically your, yourself, right? Than, try to that is exhausting. Uh, it's serious. exhausting yeah. trying to be somebody that you're not. It really is. And as you begin to like peel the layers of who you are and just be more comfortable with who you are, it's, it's so liberating. It really is. <laughs> so what makes it fun for you? I'm, I'm wondering how do you like play or have fun or what do those words mean to you when, when you're doing these kind of goofy things on, on the internet? I mean, when I wake up, I'm already kind of dictating the way I want my day. So for instance, with the sweatshirt, you know, if I'm going to wear something, I have a lot of fun shirts and a lot of fun sweatshirts. So even if I'm in the mood where I'm like, okay, I want to kind of be nostalgic and bring out my inner child, I'll purposely wear these type of shirts and, and sweatshirts. And then a lot of times when I want to do a post or I have some kind of content, I tend to do it in a really fun way. Plus I'm a very creative person. I'm an artist, so I paint as well and I love music. So then I always incorporate that creativity and the music and, and, and it just naturally comes out fun. You know, I figure when people are scrolling through their feed, they're gonna, you want them to stop. And the only way to make them stop is to do something different and to maybe come across in a way where like, wait, I haven't seen this before. So I'm lucky that it kind of comes out pretty naturally for me. I don't really have to think much about it. Like for instance, when I just did my new year's post, I did a fun video where I did, you know, I fast forwarded it. So I was kind of, you know, doing my thing I really quickly. Yeah. I, and it took two seconds. I did it in one take. I came up with the idea just like while I was just in bed the night before and you know, I, th I feel like it stood out. Not many people were doing that with the music and everything. And that's just kind of like what I do. Did you just it, use software for the time lapse? I, have, you know, I use the InShot app and yeah. I do everything on there. So I'm able to filter it. I'm able to add text if I want to. I'm able to, able to add, I added the fireworks through there. I added the music. Um, I did everything just through InShot. It's, it's really simple and all through my phone. I don't even have to use my laptop. Wow. Yes, I can do uh, the comfort of my bed if I wanted to. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah, and you get uh, a little social media tip there. and I like it. What do you do yeah. outside of work to, for fun, though? What do you do to relax if you're doing goofy stuff like this for a living? Well, right now, I've pretty much been very respectful of everything going on, so I don't really go out much at all. So, for instance, I do have speakers on my main floor in my condo, and I am always playing music. I do 
bop around and dance around my condo. I know my neighbors probably look in and think, <laughs> okay, she's what's going on in there. Cause I don't close my, <laughs> my blinds. They're the creepy ones looking in the window. Don't yeah, judge. So I'll yeah. Dancing around, I'll paint. Um, I'll even watch shows on TV and like on Netflix that are funny, like comedic shows, because I do love to laugh. So if you can- Do you have a favorite? Laugh. I watch a lot of their stand up uh, for sure. But what do you, what do you watch? I watch a lot of, like, for instance, I was obsessed at one point in time, coffee in cars with comedians. <laughs> like, I yes, love Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld like, yeah. very dry, um, you know, Curb Your Enthusiasm, like those type of shows. I love Amy Schumer. And so, you know, like her type of stand up, uh, Kevin Hart, uh, Dave Chappelle. You know, I just, I just love to laugh. I honestly do. If I can just sit and laugh all day long, I think I'd be in heaven because you're just releasing all those endorphins and dopamine and it's a, it's a natural high. Do you ever feel guilty that you're playing too much or having too much fun? Or do you think there is a time when you should not, it's not appropriate to play? I used to, but for my mental health, and this is something I talk about a lot on my social media is, you know, our mental well being is huge, especially now more than ever. Mm -hmm. And if that's what I need in order to keep myself sane and happy and kind of content with my life, then that's what I do. And so be it. You know, I'm in a place in my life at age 45 where I've really stopped listening to what other people think I should do with my life. I mean, it's my life, yes. right? So why? how does anybody else know what's the best thing for me? I mean, obviously, there are situations where, you know, people need to intervene and be like, okay, <laughs> intervention but i haven't gotten to that point yet um but as far as just like how i'm gonna live my life i do it in a way that is that feels right and i've been more about following my heart and my intuition and my inner voice and if it's playing all day long in a way where i'm still being productive then why not i mean i think i'm very blessed to be able to do that yeah, I agree. I think life is, is short. You don't want to, you can, you know, you don't want to do it all grumpy uh, and hope that someday you can retire and have fun or, or something like 40 years from now. Like that's not fun. Um, and I agree what you said too. I think there is a little bit of getting older that uh, we naturally play and have fun and we're goofy up until about like 13. And then you start <laughs> noticing the opposite sex or other adults and you want to like, fit in and be liked and be popular. And so you start pulling back. And then I think as you get out further, like forties, fifties, sixties, what I want to be an old man someday, because I feel like old men really, you finally get to just let it fly and nobody can judge. They're like, he's old. And he's crazy. Kid. I don't know. Like I do have an affinity for old men. <laughs> I, I, I met. So just funny little side story. There's, I don't know if you know Wegmans, the grocery store, but anyways, there's a Wegmans yeah. and they have the cafe at, at, you know, most of the stores. So every morning I would go and get my coffee before work. Cause I had worked right there in the town center. And there were these two older men, probably in their late seventies, even eighties. And they were always in line with me. And finally, one day I'm like, screw it. I'm going to say hi. Cause they keep, they're always in line. And, I, and you know, at some point you got to like start talking to the people. <laughs> So then I started flirting with them. And of course they ate it up and they're like, Hey, you know what? We, there's a group of us that have coffee here every day. Why don't you come upstairs and have your coffee with us? And I was like, sure. Why not? I can be late to work. So I went upstairs and there was a group of seven or eight of them that are regulars. And I ended up becoming a regular and That's I awesome. absolutely was in heaven because not only once again, in 70s, 80s, they just say, say it like it is, but they had so much wisdom and the stories that they shared with me were fantastic. I walked away feeling so fulfilled and it's, and those are the type of things that I purposely do to kind of keep that playfulness because like I said, I was flirting with them. They were flirting with me. It was very innocent, but I feel like I helped them in a way <laughs> they helped me. It was, it yeah. was a very beneficial, you know, friendship for the, for all of us. <laughs> well, and that's the best, right? When people can approach each other just authentically and playfully and not just taking everything so seriously that you can, uh, you can really have fun and enjoy the moment and nobody has to judge or be weird or make it awkward. I like you just, for over a good year right. with them. I would, I would meet yeah. them for coffee and they, and I remember they, they always say Raquel, 
and we can't believe that you just decided like to have coffee with a, like a bunch of strangers. And I was like, yeah, but that's where it has to start somewhere. And that's where it started was just me saying yes to them inviting me to their little coffee group. <laughs> Well, you hit another big thing there, but I did want to tell people, you reminded me of the movies like the Grumpy Old Men movies. If you've never seen that, those are the funniest They're movies. So <laughs> They're so good. They're so good. I want to go back and watch them now, find out what, what streaming channel they're on and watch them just because they were so great. But there is something special about being old. But the other thing you said is there's something special about saying yes. And I've especially made that one of my goals in the last year or, or two is, especially with my nieces and, and nephew is, if they ask me to play, I always say yes. Yeah. That that it's just, you know, it's life's too short to say no to play seems really weird. And, and what else more important do you have going on than to spend some time with a kid and really play and no matter what it is that yeah. they're doing. And sometimes it's- it's the best. Yeah, I mean, that's why I started my yeah. YouTube channel, Rock the Boat, because it allows me the opportunity to speak to kids and just have fun in a way. I mean, obviously, you know, some of the conversations are a little bit more serious, which is great. But at the same time, just talking to kids just reminds you, you know, how innocent they are and just they're not you know, self-absorbed or jaded or cynical yet. There's a certain age and that'll be interesting because I just started it, but I'm going to be talking to kids of all ages and it'll be interesting to see at what ages the kids you can st start seeing that they're being um, kind of manipulated by <laughs> the outside world, right? Because yeah. there are there is an age like when you're much younger where you don't care and you're just playing and you have your own imagination, but there definitely is a turning point there. And I'm starting to notice a little bit with the 12, 13 year olds. I think that's it. Uh, in my research, I think one, we were lucky because we're, we're similar ages that we grew up with the internet, not like with the internet being around. So it was relatively innocent when we were relatively innocent. <laughs> and then now that we're adults, it's kind of grown into this thing that, that I don't think anybody can handle now. But uh, studies have shown that at 13, kids are quitting sports now because it's not fun anymore, that it's become so competitive and serious. And there's so much pressure to not fail or not be on YouTube, like, you know, getting dunked on or something that kids are just quitting. Yeah, if you're not getting uh, recruited by in high school, then you're, you, right. you, know, you failed as, you know, an athlete. And that's my daughter, even she's 16 and she was a really good softball player. And she ended up quitting last year and it was like devastating to my ex-husband because we had put so much time and energy and she was doing travel since she was nine. Yeah. Really. I mean, she basically could have gotten a scholarship anywhere if she continued with it, but she just got burnt down and she realized that a social life was fun because she didn't really have a social life before because she was playing tournaments right. on the weekend. She would be out of town in the summer. Her summers were all traveling. And then as soon as she, she started realizing like, hey, I'd rather hang out with my girlfriends and be able to do the social events, she basically gave it up. And, and enjoy it's, life, it's yeah. It's a tough one because you, there should be a good balance there, right? You want your kids to play right. sports. You don't want them to have it all be about the friends and partying and all of that. Uh, but yeah, that was a tough one for us. I mean, she's still a good kid, but. Well, know, I think the key that. here, and maybe it's just me pushing my agenda here, but I think the key is if, she, if you're playing for fun, you don't have to quit uh, and your yeah. friends play with you. And I was lucky enough to grow up playing soccer with a neighborhood group that we made it all the way through high school, all playing together. So our high school soccer team, nine of the 11 starters played together since we were like in kindergarten and, and uh, five or six years old. And so it was fun and we played because it was fun, not because it was competitive. And sure we traveled and we did the tournaments, but those were fun too. They weren't, to get to the an ends or a means or something. Yeah. But the same thing did happen to me in college. You reminded me, it was so funny. I mean, I tell people why I quit. I, I played for like two seconds. Um, and I, in, I, I'm a, I'm a big guy. You can't tell on video, which is weird uh, because everybody's been virtual this year. You can't yeah. tell how tall anybody is, but I'm, I'm six two, like 200 pounds. Oh, if, yeah. if I got knocked over in soccer game, that's big for a soccer player. Okay. If I got knocked over or beat up in high school, that was pretty rare. 
like somebody would have to be pretty big, but I went to college and there's these like 24 year old, like ex Marines in their first year of eligibility. And I was just getting destroyed. I was beat up and bruised. And, and I came home like bloody and beat up to the fraternity house after like the first week of, of soccer. And, uh, the guys were like, Hey, how was the game? And I was like, ah, fine. We won. You know, I, I'm exhausted. What'd you guys do? And they're like, Oh, we were at the hot tub with these girls. And I was like, butt kicked by a Marine hot tub with girls. This is not a tough call. Right? <laughs> and it just, it wasn't fun anymore. Right. That's, that's where I lost the passion. Yeah. For. She stopped having fun. And then at that point, you know, coaches get super competitive too. And the coaches start, you know, expecting certain things and a certain, um, you know, commitment. And she just wasn't ready for that. So, oh, well. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's a lesson for us here as, as adults, because anything you get into your career because it's fun and you enjoy doing it, but then you start having to make money and everybody's trying to scale up their business and, and 1 million isn't enough. You have to go for 2 million. And so you're working too hard that you lose the play aspect of it. I, I think when you put too much pressure on yourself and anything that you're doing. No, no, I agree. And, and for myself, I mean, I was a stay at home mom. I got married young and had a, my first, my son at 25. So I didn't have a career or anything. And it wasn't until I was 35 that I got divorced. And then, you know, it was like, oh gosh, I got to get into the corporate world. I need health insurance. So in that point, <laughs> it had nothing to do with what I wanted to do, like, any of my interest. It was literally someone that I had met where I lived was the COO of a builder. It was like, Hey, we need a receptionist. Why don't you get in and then see where it goes. And then I ended up being, um, creating their customer service department. Talk about like, Oh, you know, all I did is had dealt with people that were angry and they would call me Man. not to tell me how much they love their home, but how much, you know, they were upset about something broke. And so I dealt with that all day long. And then I ended up in the mortgage industry and that's really stressful. And I think what happened was it got to the point where I was like, all right, you know what? Like I need to figure out what I love doing. And I was very lucky and fortunate enough to where I had bosses in one of the mortgage companies that realized that I was really good with social media and really good on LinkedIn and had a, a, a brand myself. And so that's when they said, we want you to be ahead, like the brand manager for our company. And then that's essentially how I ended up doing personal brand strategy, but it's luckily they saw the strengths in me and then created that role because I myself was just trying to navigate like, what the heck am I going to do when I grow up? And here at 45, yeah. I'm finally starting to figure out what it is. And that's why I'm doing the YouTube channel. And yeah. And tell me more uh, about that. So you're talking with kids of different ages about, what they have going on and stuff. Anything. What got you there and, and what's it all about? Well, like for yourself with the podcast, you know, you obviously love to talk and you wanted to have conversations with people and talk about play and fun and all of that. And I knew that I'm, I'm really good at talking. <laughs> I've always been a talker. I've been made fun of it for it always as since <laughs> I was a little kid. I was that person in class and I just love people. I genuinely do. And I love storytelling and I love hearing other people's stories. And so my mentor was like, you know, he's like, I, I picture you as like a Tom Bill, you a Joe Rogan, like a female version where you're just having conversations with people. Like you have yeah, a really good way of having people open up to you. And I thought, I love that idea, but I want to do something different. Um, I don't want to do a podcast and I've always wanted to work with kids at some capacity. I've always loved children. I thought I was going to be a teacher when I was younger. I worked at a preschool. Um, I love being a mom. I just like, I just, like I said, I'm a little kid at heart. So then that's where it just, the idea came into fruition where I was like, you know what, I'll just have conversations with kids and I want it to be like back to the basics. So it's unscripted totally candid. I mean, there are some kids that I will have never met or spoken to until I hit the record button on that Zoom call. And then we just start talking about anything. I've, I've talked about Pokemon cards, Star Wars. Um, I watched The Mandalorian because of one of the, because of Natasha told me I should watch it. And now so I'm good. obsessed. Now I'm obsessed with like all of Star Wars and did a marathon. <laughs> Um, I've, sp I talked to two girls in Singapore cause I was on their mother's podcast and they love to draw. So one of, uh, we didn't record it, but they wanted to have a zoom call with me where we just drew. So we, they were drawing, I was drawing 
And I'm loving it because I'm developing these friendships with these kids too, where outside of the Zoom call, they'll text me or the one of them, their family FaceTime me on New Year's Eve. I just That's love awesome. that they feel like they have me to talk to other than their parents or maybe their school teachers. And I think just for kids, it's really important for their development to be able to interact with adults. It's a life lesson, like, like it's a life skill, it's a social skill. And, you know, too many kids, they're losing their social skills and they're so, you know, much on their phone and TikTok and everything is produced. And then they're creating content and the music and the video, it's crazy. So I was just like, no, I want it to be completely stripped <laughs> and almost like back to like a Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, if you will. <laughs> I was thinking about Mr. Rogers the other day, and I don't know who brought it up. Uh, could have been your LinkedIn feed or something, but I, um, I, do I was thinking about how special right. he was. I saw a video on YouTube where a, a foreign woman watched Mr. Rogers for the first time. She had never heard about it. Okay. And she was like bawling. <laughs> she was like, oh my gosh, I feel like this needs to be on right now. And I do think we have, have lost that because there there's something special there and people aren't just genuinely interested in the person or that it's okay to be yourself and yeah uh, and these kids i yeah, know they're liking amazing. they're enjoying it because everyone every one of those kids has come back on they've all asked their parents can we do another cool. conversation with miss raquel and that's another thing too is it's not like a i don't want it to be like a regular podcast where you have a guest and then you're like crap i gotta go find another one right and you gotta just like keep finding guests right. if i have five kids that are reoccurring guests <laughs> i'm okay with that because there's so much that we can talk about with each with each kid so for me i'm not really like trying to move on if anything i'm trying to like i said cultivate a relationship with that kid because i want it to be where i really make an impact and that's my word for the year you know everyone that's talks cool. about like what's your word my word for yeah. 2021 is impact and my word last year was clarity like i feel like i finally got this clarity of what it is that i'm supposed to do what i'm good at and i'm just gonna follow that passion, that love. And at some point I know that I'll be able to hopefully monetize it and have it be something that I do full time. And who knows where it'll take me or where, I mean, I feel like it could go anywhere at this point, right? There's so much potential. Yeah. It's so cool. And it would be cool if it was the same kids uh, to see them grow up and, and change and, and overcome some of those things that they talk about or or go to different things. It's a cool yeah. idea. I appreciate it. So it's time to play a game. Oh, uh, I call this the wheel of weird. If you play and win, uh, I'll put you on the wheel of weird winners on the website, playfulhumans.com. Okay. Uh, so it could be anything, puzzle, game, awkward question. Uh, would you like to spin the wheel or would you like to uh, walk duh. away? Of course I want to spin the wheel. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, am I spinning it? <laughs> no. Oh, it's spun. Uh, you got the wheel of fortune. Wait, wait, what kind of wheel am I spinning? <laughs> uh, it's more of a wheel uh, of fortune wheel. Okay, yeah. So um, down below. But you got. <laughs> now I got. Now I got to spin it again. Okay. Uh, you got lie to me. Uh, lie to me is basically uh, two truths and a lie. So uh, you say three statements about yourself. Uh, one of them is a lie, and we'll try and guess which one people can guess in in the comments and stuff too uh okay. it'll be awkward if you listen to the whole thing because then you'll know the answer so guess right now in the comments do you want me to go first or do you want to go first you go first so i can think about it okay um <laughs> uh, three things i was in a pbs after school special about ethics in sports okay. in high school um i received a college scholarship to play soccer and I played in a celebrity soccer game at Arrowhead Stadium where the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs play uh, in front of thousands of people. I was a celebrity in a celebrity soccer game. I got a college scholarship or I was in an after school special on PBS. Um, so I have to guess the lie? Yeah. Okay, well, you already said you played soccer in college, so I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that you did go have a scholarship. But I feel like the celebrity one is is too easy because you did play soccer. So I'm gonna say that you actually didn't play in a celebrity soccer game. 
That was a lie. Oh, no, that was true. I, Romeo from Mix 93.3 uh, was a celebrity in the Celebrity oh, Halftime Show. darn it. Okay. It was during a oh. Kansas City Wizards soccer game, though. Where they used to play at the Chiefs Stadium. Uh, and then I fooled you because I told you I quit uh, playing soccer. So if I had a scholarship, I would have had to play the season out. But oh, no, it was. Yeah. Uh, See, I'm not was, as smart as I look. <laughs> it was club. It was club soccer, and I gave up after like uh, yeah two weeks. I think. See, that was too easy. That's what happens. You made it too easy that I got tricked. Um, okay, <laughs> All right, your turn. Well, what do you got? All right. Well, just side note: the the Chargers beat the Chiefs last night. Just. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I know, even though they had like, you know, their second string players. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, two truths and a lie. I have to be honest with this one. I've never played this one before. So that that is true. <laughs> um, well, one of them have to be. <laughs> okay, I know. No, no. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so um, I was a bartender at a Hooters restaurant in LA. I crashed into a Subway sandwich shop when I was 16. And I did peyote with the Weechel Indians in Mexico. Oh, man, those are all great stories. Uh, and you made me think of some good new lies for uh, or trues when when I play next time. Uh, I'm going to go with the peyote is the lie. I feel like you're fun enough naturally that you wouldn't have to. What, what do you think? No, the lie is I was a bartender to Hooters in LA. I've never bartended oh. in my life. So I was like, I think of like a weird place. I was like, Hooters. Well, <laughs> I thought that lie. was, I thought that was so far out there that it had to be true because you wouldn't necessarily volunteer that information if you weren't. Yeah, that's uh, but I was like, no, I did pay and that's amazing. Um, my aunt is a philanthropist and she has a, a nonprofit for the Weechel Indians. My mom's Mexican. And when I was in my early twenties, I did a mm -hmm. Easter week. So it's a sacred week for them. And it is known that if they offer you peyote, you have to do it. If they don't, wow. you cannot ask because it's not a touristy place. Like you're there, no running water, no electricity. I mean, you're like roughing it. No bathrooms, nothing, no toilet paper. So I did that for a good 10 days. And yeah, one of the one of those nights they offered me peyote. So I was like, all right, well, so I did that. And then I actually did crash into a Subway sandwich shop when I had just got my license and brand new car when I was 16. I was on the evening news and my entire yeah, car. Yeah, I felt that one was like a true, but you made the news? Oh, that's Yeah, awkward. I was on the evening news on Sunday. Yeah, there happened to be a newscaster that was next door eating at a soup plantation or something and heard my car oh, literally man. like, because my foot slipped off of the brake onto the gas pedal. So the impact, my car just went over the curb and just like right into a, uh, into the subway. Yeah. <laughs> so you reminded me of one of my favorite stories of all time though, that I'm gonna have to use this next time, or maybe I'm gonna burn it now so I can't use it, but it's so good. I have to tell the story. I haven't told it in years. Well, I, I How I got on the radio. I was a, uh, a club karaoke DJ in, in a bar and I was hosting a karaoke show and there was this big black woman who was dancing to Back That Ass Up by Genuine. Um, uh, and just tell you how long ago it was, you know, like early two thousands, <laughs> she tripped, uh, on a chair and fell through the front window of the bar, like out oh, no. into the, the street and crashed through. It was horrible. She was okay. But the morning show hosts for the radio stations were in the bar that night and they never forgot it. So for the rest of the time, they were like, Romeo and back that ass up are linked forever linked. Every time they hear the song, they'll text me still to this day. <laughs> like, do you remember that? Oh my it was so funny. And we had just a blast. And she came back in and partied. Everybody was well, fine, but it was because I night you would not forget. But then again, depending on how much I've had, like alcohol I had to drink, I probably would have been like, screw it. I'm going to go back in and dance. That's a great song. <laughs> yeah. No reason to go back home. <laughs> so that's awesome all right raquel i appreciate you being on the show again that was uh that raquel was fun Burris. thank you so much for for being here and being honest and sharing and having fun and uh people can find you again rock the boat on youtube r-a-q yeah. the boat and i'm on linkedin facebook instagram 
Yeah, and we'll put all those links in the notes as well so you can do that. Uh, remember, you can subscribe to this show on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, whatever you got. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. Any suggestions for guests, cool people that play for a living, I would love those as well. And don't forget, take the quiz, PlayfulHumans.com. Bye, everybody.